And uh, thank you. So will the meeting please come to order? And I wanna thank you all for being here. And I don't know if we have visitors, I can't see that part from here, but uh, staff. And uh, it is the April 13th District Advisory Committee of the North Clackamas Parks Rec. And as you heard, we're being recorded. So moving right along, um, first thing we have on the agenda is the um, meeting summary. So it was distributed. Uh, are there any corrections or additions to, to the uh, summary? Uh, Joel, your hands up. Uh, yes, uh, it, this is just a housekeeping thing. Uh, under DAC member reports, under my name, uh, uh, with indoor mask mandates lifting on Saturday, is there a plant to have the DAC meetings in person soon uh, where it should be planned, obviously? I know that's silly, but why not throw it out there? I'm going back to the record. I think you said plant. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, actually. Yeah, I saw that too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they breathe carbon Fair dioxide. Enough. So it's about the mask, it isn't quite the same, right? <laughs> if I'm outvoted, uh, we can leave it as is. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we will make that okay. change. Thank you. You got that, Jessica? So yes, I got um, that. thank you. So are there any objections to making the suggested uh, correction? Hearing none, the minutes stand approved. So the next item is, um, I'd like, can I share screen? I don't know how I get to get, get to do that. Oh, I don't it says know right if there. you can share screen or not. Can, does it well, allow it you if you hit the button? Yeah, well, I haven't tried yet, but I'm about to share screen. And OK, good. That's not what I want. There we go. That's what I wanted. OK, good. So. Um, I assume most of you heard a bit of uh, what went on at the April 30th, excuse me, March 30th um, Board of Directors meeting. I gave a little history on how we got to here and I'd like to pick up from there and go forward to where we are. But the important parts I wanna make sure get included is that this all started because the Clackamas County uh, Comprehensive Plan calls for all these things and calls out the uh, significant uh, lack of parks in the urban north area, calls out specific areas, et cetera. So we'll skip all the, the specifics of that. So it was in fact, the county's planning department coupled with about 30 um, citizens who ran the process, got the ballot, got it passed, and then went out and formed the five sub areas that it called for and um, actually then from that set up and had um, two-way communication because the next thing they did after that was those sub-area um, neighborhood boards, each sent a person up to the district advisory committee, much like we do here with our library district as well. But nonetheless, they did that, plus they had a couple other people appointed directly. And so that gave a direct two-way link. And um, back in 2019, Baldwin and I and some other folks asked the Board of County Commissioners to reset where we were and get back to being a proportional based group. And they agreed. And so we did the DAB, doing the bylaws, and here we sit. And in that process, they also asked specifically um, that we uh, set it up so that we can begin to reclaim. So here are the areas. And let's see if I can pull up the fancy. There we go, and oh, I didn't even make it full screen like that. Okay, so this is somewhat um, what we are fixing to do. And if you'll see, there's the five sub areas left to right. It's sub area one, where I am, two, where Anita and um, Brian are, where I and Deborah are, sorry, Deborah. And then uh, three is vacant, four is, uh, Maureen and Dave, who I don't think Dave's here yet, and then Milwaukee, and we have uh, Desi representing Milwaukee. And the point of it is, each has approximately 22,000, each has two reps that are actually representing their sub area. Yes, Joel? Uh, there's also one rep uh, for the community centers. Down on uh, the left side. Right, I just, uh, it wasn't mentioned, I didn't think, I just wanted okay, to Okay, I'm sure. sorry, no sliding intended. <laughs> 
And that shall hold. Uh, the, the one representative for community centers uh, is also there. So the point of it is, um, that is how it was set up originally. Slightly different geography, but the same concept and um, the same two reps and the district advisory committee back then was called the regional board. And we are in the process of doing that. But the important part in the request for the uh, board of directors was for a task force January a year ago to set up how we would do this outreach to be able to just begin to, and in our packet, we specifically talked about it's not gonna happen instantly. Back then you had the whole system working on it. We had the planning department, we had all these people, and they were able to instantly set up all those. And we are doing a ground up without putting a significant amount of uh, stress or demand on the staff. We were doing a voluntary run. And the thing that's not showing on here is over there between the two reps uh, for Milwaukee and their approximately 22,000 residents, don't wanna slide them, I think they have slightly more, but they're all approximately that amount. Uh, they have a parks board and we are in the process of over the next several years, as was requested, working towards having that grow in the four unincorporated sub areas. And so we actually have a number of groups that have already exist or are in the process of forming like the uh, friends uh, for the park at Jennings Lodge School as an example. And there's the friends at River Villa. And these are not meant to be a strain on the staff. These are local community groups focusing on their appreciation for, and it gives us a chance to speak to more residents and get input from them. So you all heard a bit from the folks out in, in um, sub area three and their um, justice property. They have a friends of group going there as well. So that's what we're in the process of doing. And so that's the longer picture of it. But where we are right now is we will be having, uh, as soon as we get the dates cleared with the county, um, uh, in uh, May, we have a few choices for a date for a town hall that will meet in a large group. We will actually give updates on what's been going on in NCPRD and where we're headed. And then we'll break out into the um, sub area groups and they can get to meet more of their own neighbors, et cetera. And then we'll be encouraging them to come back for the next meeting and we'll do something similar, but not the same. Uh, and then do the breakout. And in that time, we will have already had be sure that we had enough candidates that uh, applied just like everybody else does by submitting their application to uh, the public and government affairs. They will receive those and then pass them on to our um, volunteer group like we did before. And we will make sure there's enough in each group to meet our requirements because we have two openings in sub area three and then sub area one and four have two people whose terms are ending. So they're reapplying and others may as well, but there'll be an opportunity for selecting by their, um, their group, AKA their nominating committee. So given all that, that's what we have in mind to move forward. The only other thing I wanna to speak to is that most people, and I'm, I was so pleased to find out history had this actually be tied to the comprehensive plan, given that 83% of NCPRD is a non-incorporated, and so the comprehensive plan does apply there. Milwaukee has their own, so they have theirs, but they have their own parks board, et cetera, so I'm sure they're keeping track of their comprehensive plan. But the comprehensive plan is designed to organize and coordinate complex interrelationships among people, land, resources, and facilities to protect the future health, safety, quality of life, and welfare of Clackamas County residents. So. That and the other statement I want to read from there is that the comprehensive plan is supported by better information and a more effective citizen involvement process. And that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish. And that's what is stated in the comprehensive plan. And we are sticking true to that. And we believe this is in compliance of what the bylaws say, because this is how we generate a nominating committee. Um, and it doesn't have to be, I mean, I've done a lot of bylaws, so we can have another conversation about that another time. So that is the gist of what I want to talk about. Are there any questions? Okay. What I would like is some assistance from 
the DAC members and staff as appropriate through whatever channels we get to work with you. And by the way, I have to say last year, we did a very similar process to this and both the PGA and the NCPRD staff were phenomenal partners. And case in point, we went from zero to eight representatives in the allotted time and it went very well. So thank you all for that. And hopefully we're gonna take less of your efforts, but to be able to accomplish the same thing. So our request is in each of the sub areas, if you have any means as a DAC member or just a resident to contact others who care about parks, who care about parks in your vicinity. And by the way, you may know somebody who lives in a different sub area. That's totally fine. But we want to encourage people who live in the unincorporated to be able to begin to tie into this two-way communication process. And here's the jewel. When they did it the first time, they led up to the first master plan and all of the sub areas participated in providing input for the master plan. And we are about to launch a similar version and I'm looking forward to finding the timeline and how we work on that because it is something we can all work on together with this outreach, this growing uh, inclusion of community members and we can work to um, have a very well attended um, process for getting community input as far as our next set of master plan, we'll call it system plan. Last chance, any questions? Thank you. That's all I had on that. So I don't need a screen share anymore. I have to undo oh, that somehow. Could you show the map one more time, please? Oh, sure. Oh, and I see hands up now. Gosh, I didn't even see him. Okay. Yes. Uh, is the map current as well for the divisions? Are those, again? Is the is the map that we're seeing a current representation of uh, my sub area four? So I can just uh, jot down some notes. I believe so. One, and it's also available at any time on the NCPRD website. Right. Included, it has a place where you can actually put any address in, and it will show you on the map where that address is. Okay. Okay, uh, Brian. Oh, okay. Backwards. Going yeah, around. sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to see the map. Sorry. No problem. And you do know everyone knows that that's available on the NCPRD website. Okay, cool. One thing I need notice about it is if you look at the size of the Milwaukee sub area five and four and three, they're close to the same size. And what you see in the two and one is it's a much bigger space. And I do believe we have less density and that's why we had to do that to get the, uh, to get the common um, space uh, proportional population. Okay, good. I'm gonna stop sharing screen and we'll move on to... So next item is the 22-23 budget update. Thank you, Chair. Um, it, I, I really don't have much of an update as far as the slides that you see. Most of those uh, are, are very similar, if not exactly the same as what we talked about last month. Um, I don't know who's bringing that up, Elizabeth or Jessica, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna just uh, go through these, uh, the first few slides uh, like I did the last time, uh, just to talk about any uh, changes or, or anything. But if anybody's got any questions about what you're seeing right now, just know this doesn't have all of our information because the budget committee still has not yet seen this. I just had my, my uh, meeting with the county administrator this morning, finalizing a few de details of what's getting put into the roll up budget. Um, and so not everything in here is as up to date as, uh, as it is of, as of this morning, but it is as close as we could get to get a packet uh, together for you. Uh, so next slide. and just scroll through, there we go. Uh, so really the biggest update is uh, last time we talked to you, we were uh, up in the upper, the, the next section up. Uh, things have moved uh, along. So there's been the feedback on budget proposals, county administrators, final approval uh, it was a little late. It just, like I said, happened this morning. Um, we've put all of our information together and, and we'll be putting that into uh, the county's finance system. 
Um, and so we're now at this April 13th, uh, the reviewing the proposed budget with the DAC. Uh, beyond that, uh, we're, we're getting into the budget hearings coming up in, in early to or mid to late May. Grover. Yeah, I, I can wait until you have a break or I can ask my question now, which would Go you for prefer? It. Okay, good. Well, I noticed that this has, uh, and I know it, uh, but the sheet that we've had been working with all year uh, actually says that the review of the proposed budget with the DAC is at our next meeting on May 11th. And that is what's on the published document. And uh, I'm not prepared at this moment looking at this budget. I have more questions than we can answer in the time allotted about, and by the way, I really wanna be clear with the change in the formats and stuff, it's not like I don't think it's all valid, but I don't have enough understanding. And my understanding as our position by selection by the voters uh, to do this is we're local representatives and our approval is based on that we understand it and I don't understand it yet. So uh, I have a concern and I could start asking some of the questions, but I don't know, I don't, I think it'll far exceed the amount of time we have. And I was surprised to see the change in the date that is on this page, as opposed to the page that you've given us and it's been, been in place all along that it was scheduled to be at our next meeting. Well, and, and keep in mind, our, our date changes are mostly driven by finance date changes. And, and as deadlines shift, we've updated this. Um, I've, I've given as much exposure to the budget as I can. Um, I, I'm not able to talk about the specifics of the budget or have any deliberation um, in, a, in a large form uh, of, of making recommendations. My understanding is until the budget committee has had a chance to review the budget. What I can tell you is that the county administrator has gone through the budget with me as has the finance team. Uh, the county administrator has approved the budget as I've proposed. Um, I'm, I'm prepared to answer uh, questions um, if, they're, if they're operational, maybe, and there's a lot of them, maybe put them together in a uh, question format and email that to me so we, we can get those taken care of. But um, I'm well, presenting I, overall, overall budget numbers, not looking at individual line item functions. Right, this idea about submitting questions is, is really not very workable for me. I, I, I have conversations that one question leads to another, et cetera. And I do know that for, I'm on the library board as well, and we have a standard procedure that we, well, I see other hands up, so, but I, I'll just say that we, we have a standard procedure that we work with a subcommittee that, because most people don't care about the budgets enough, but some of us do, and we feel it's our responsibility. So we have a subcommittee meeting. Every member could be willing to, I mean, any member who wants to be there can be there, um, but those who want to roll up the sleeves and get the questions answered, and then we go to their next meeting and we have no questions and everybody's happy campers. So let me, uh, Ryan, you were next and I'll take my hand down and. Uh, yes, um, Michael, a quick question. I just want, I just want to confirm uh, the district advisory board is an advisory committee. We don't have um, the ability, ability to um, approve, deny anything. And I just want to clarify for the group that um, in our review of the budget, it's just for us to understand it. Is that correct? That, uh, the second part is is not has not been as clear, but yes, the the board is advisory. They're supposed to advise the board of county or our NCPRD board on matters relating to finance, land acquisitions, property developments, priorities, all all the stuff laid out in in the bylaws. Um, I've provided as many touch opportunities at our regular meetings as I can on the budget. Uh, we the information we presented last month is nearly identical just with some updated uh, numbers to this month. Um, but again, I have to follow the process that's laid out by the finance committee and the county administrator as well. And so I, I, I'm i just not sure at what more level than what we're doing right now we can be providing. I, I guess that was a, a loaded question. Um, I hope most of you got that. Uh, that was more of a loaded question that, that um, thank you for showing us the budget. 
And I think if we have questions, it's great that we can ask those questions to the commissioners and, and put that towards the commissioners because that's who we essentially speak or speak to. Is that correct? So yeah, thanks for showing us the budget. Um, and it's also good to know that like as, a, as an advisory committee member, I don't have approval authority or anything like that. And I just want to clarify that so the whole group knows where we stand in, in uh, our responsibilities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Anita. Well, you know, we, we deal with so many different things at these DAC meetings, and I personally would like to get a better understanding of the budget issues in a subcommittee meeting where all we deal with is the budget and we aren't trying to juggle a whole lot of other topics. So I would like to do the subcommittee approach for anybody who's interested. I would, I would be interested. And if it's appropriate, I'll make a motion about it if it's the right time. Well, I, I would bring up, and, and my only counterpoint is we, we have a NCPRD finance committee uh, that, that is, and Elizabeth, make sure I'm saying this right, that's in addition to the county's finance uh, or sub budget committee. Budget committee, that's correct. Yeah. Sorry. So we have a NCPRD specific budget committee, right. uh, as well as oversight from the overall county budget committee for budget, for budget development specifically. Well, I know somebody who's on the budget committee, so I'm kind of familiar with it, but that doesn't help me understand what's going on. And I would like to actually have understanding happen for the DAC members, as well as people who are on that budget committee. Um, maybe I'm asking a lot, but um, I would like to give it a shot and be on a, a subcommittee that would explore uh, all the details and then report back to the DAC um, just for the sake of making recommendations that are responsible rather than uh, expecting to have uh, the power of approval. Well, it's, it, I'm just more concerned on what the questions would be because my job is to develop the operating budget and, and to put that budget together. Uh, that's been overseen by the county administrator. Again, I, I would go to more Ryan's point of, uh, we're showing you the budget. I, I'm prepared to explain any questions that you have on the different funds and, and balances, uh, but getting down into operational details is not the role of the DAC. Okay, well, let me, let me step in for a second, Anita, and then you can go more. I, I just wanna read the, the uh, article three of the district advisory board bylaws says to provide recommendations during the annual budget process. That's recommendations. It doesn't just say, yeah, we saw it. For the acquisition development operations and maintenance of NCPRD facilities and programs. In addition, the DAC will identify and prioritize necessary capital projects and provide project recommendations to the board of directors. So those are all pretty clear, not about approving a budget, but the things that the budget contains, like I'll give you an example since you wanted one, on the summary of total proposed budget, when I look at this, it is a 39% increase over the last, uh, that's being proposed over what it was in 2019, 2020. That's a significant increase in personal services. And now my only question is not unlike the part about how allocations are being distributed and how SDCs will be used. It's also how NCPRD funds are being used to meet the criteria, which is that we are meeting the uh, specific challenges, desires and needs of all district residents. So what makes that big a jump in our uh, personnel services is a, is a question, I'm not challenging it, please. I just like to understand what was the criteria that was based on, and there's no detail here, none. So that's my concern. And so I'm agreeing with Anita and the dates that I was living with until you sent this packet out just recently was that May 11th is the review proposed budget with DAC and we've been dealing with this same thing since last fall. So um, I see Mr. Savas' hand is up. I will yield to him and see where we go. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I'm going to throw you all a lifeline here. Um, uh, as you, as many of you probably know, our, our goal has been to 
<clears throat> pull out NCPRD as a standalone service district um, from county operations. Um, I agree. Um, I think with the theme here that it is a little bit odd to have a completely separate budget committee um, that is not really taking much of a role in the daily or not the daily, but the monthly meetings, for example, the DAC, it would seem logical that a uh, perhaps, you know, an idea might be thrown out there for a subset of the NCPRD board, maybe one from every zone, be uh, on the budget committee for the five member makeup that it would be. That might be one idea out over there. I'm just throwing out ideas right now, but um, but I, I, I think that needs to be kind of overhauled. Um, at the same token is, I think that as we're navigating the district up, apart from BCS um, and Mike is new, so I'm kind of, kind of giving Mike a lifeline here too. Um, the process is something that we're gonna have to work our way through. And, and I, think it, I think it needs to be improved. Um, so I think maybe what you're asking for might, might be, um, you know, might be viable. I don't know how much we can get done this year, but I will certainly uh, reach out to the administrator as well to see if there's a way to um, uh, improve the process and streamline it so that there's better representation from the from the DAC on the budget committee. And maybe that idea of one person from, from each zone uh, would be the answer uh, on, on a future budget committee meeting. But there are terms, there are people, so we would have to phase that in somehow. I don't know how we would do that. We not, may not be able to do it this year, but maybe, that, maybe that's something we can strive for. And I'll conclude my comments there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So Dave Gilman. Uh, so who, who was invited to the this, uh, subcommittee of the budget then? Because you said it's an NCPR budget committee, but you know I have no idea what they do. And it seems like, like uh, Paul was saying that this should really be part of of the DAC, the DAC people should be on the budget committee, not somebody else who, who doesn't doesn't have any uh, interest in it. Maybe because uh, I, you know, looking at this uh, the summary of the total proposal budget, that to me, uh, I was looking at that and I scratched my head trying to figure out what it means, and because to me, it, it it's not really it doesn't really tell me anything. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to see there. Uh, looking back at some of the other budget information, uh, uh, like we had a. Uh, the 2021 2021 22 budget had 5.3 million for Concord, and I don't see where that's at all in here. What's the budget for the, what's the capital budget? Why, why is this all smooshed together in this? Uh, it should be something different than having to go through and micromanage everything versus having something where you just get this one number on here that somebody without a uh, who's not an accountant can understand. Thanks. Right. And I'd like to echo what Dave just said because when we met in December, we specifically talked about we were excited, Mike, that you're going to come up with a new, more detailed kind of budget. That that was the big excitement in that meeting. I, I was thrilled. And um, and I know it's a lot of work, but there's no notes in there, there's no explanation, and it isn't a challenge to you. Do, do not hear it that way. I just cannot make head or tail of this. And given I have a responsibility representing the residents of my sub area, as well as the residents of the entire district, that if we're going to be asked to review the proposed budget, that means that I have some sense of understanding of it and I don't currently. Dave, is your hand still up? Okay. Yes, Ryan. I, I mean, <clears throat> I get what we're talking about. I'd really love to hear Michael's presentation. Okay, good. And, and, you think and maybe light after on we, it, be fine. And hold on, maybe after we hear the presentation, we can dig into these details and find out what are we missing? Okay. Michael, could, so could we hear the presentation? Yes, and, and it's gonna look and sound very similar to what I, what I presented last month when uh, you know, I, I just have to push back that I, I would have hoped to have gotten some questions if there was that much confusion between last month's presentation and this, because the, the numbers haven't changed significantly. Uh, we've just updated them, as I said. So uh, can we move to the next slide? Brian, your hand's still up. There you go. Uh, yeah, just keep going through here. Okay, so the summary of proposed budget and, and Grover, I don't know what page you were you were that looking at. That one right at. there. This one That's right here. That's the one. 
So as I explained last month, and I'll I'll reiterate, because this is an important point. Um, Anytime we transfer money out of one fund into another fund, it's shown as either expenditure or revenue. So this summary of total proposed budget includes all funds combined with fund transfers included in there. So it's this is the way that the budget looks when you look at the county's uh, finances. Um, and it's very confusing. If you just look at the total NCPRD budget from adopted last year of 38.5 mil- or 38.3 million to 54.9 million, we're not increasing our budget by 43.2%. Uh, most of that, in fact, the bulk of that, in fact, nine, uh, m- the, the good majority of that is in transfers. And we talked about that last month. I think the next slide makes it a little clearer. So this is, uh, and uh, Elizabeth, make sure this is the one without transfers in. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So. <laughs> So this is what we did is we took that same, those same budgets and we removed all the transfers out of it so that you can actually see what the budget looks like and changes by fund. So this is the one that's more important than the, than the first one. The first one is what the budget committee sees in the open go, or the, the finance software. This one though uh, is where we can talk about all the individual funds and what's actually getting increased. So our general fund, Uh, which is what pays for all of our personnel, utilities, operations, materials, supplies, uh, et cetera, uh, is by my, and and this may adjust very slightly based off of today's uh, information uh, from the county administrator, but there's a proposed 0.8% change uh, to the expenditures of the general fund. So less than 1%, $84,861. What that includes is this is incorrect information here. It's updated. It's adding four, three FTEs, realigning the organization with slight increases to utilities and maintenance costs. So even with the increase to, to those costs, including personnel costs, my increase to my general fund budget is 0.8%. In the three SDC funds, overall, there's a negative 38.3%, but that's because this is expenditures, uh, we're anticipating a decrease to our SDC fees. In our capital budget, this this is where there's the most volatility because we've been transferring funds down to our capital projects for the most part. So you see there was a 43.3% increase. What I've done though, and and I don't know that we we created a slide specifically for this because this has all just come together, um, is what I wanted to look at was all, how all of the funds were shown in our in our budgets. So at the end of the fiscal year, uh, if you remember, I told you we have a general fund fund balance. And last year, it was as I think Grover pointed out, it was like 73% of, uh, of contingency, uh, even though we're only required to have 15%. At the end of this fiscal year, mainly because of ARPA funds being brought in to offset our revenue losses, we were estimating over an $11 million fund ending fund balance. So what I've done is I've gone and moved money from the fund balance out uh, into capital projects. We've reduced our contingency amount, although we'll have to adjust it a little bit, uh, but it's going to be around 20% uh, a contingency amount in. Uh, and then we've also taken in our capital budgets, uh, at the, uh, the way that we've budgeted in the past is we just had all the capital money lumped into capital projects. And so if you all remember previous budget numbers that we had shown, uh, it was showing like there was going to be an expectation that uh, we were going to spend $22 million in capital projects this upcoming year. Well, that's not actually what is true. What's true is we were going to spend around nine or $10 million on capital projects per the capital projects list plan that was being rolled forward from last year's budget. The rest of the money is designated as future capital expenditures. So it's just it's the it's essentially the fund balance from the from the capital projects. We have the same kind of fund balance in our SDCs, uh, and where we have money that's in our SDC account. Some of it's already allocated to projects, but there's a big chunk that's just unallocated. So what I tried to do is to move all of those down into uh, capital funds, put them in, put some money into reserve accounts, 
uh, to essentially clean up our budget, which is why it looks like there's such a large increase on, on when you look at that bottom line on that first slide. It's all a false increase. The, the main overall point is there's a 0.8% increase to our general fund. And there's just volatility moving money around in the S within the SDC funds and the capital fund, but for no other purpose than to identify the money that's being we expect to use this upcoming year or plan to use this upcoming year versus other money that is out there that, that's just essentially fund balance. So I hope that provides a little more clarity uh, on what we're looking, the numbers that we're looking at and how the transfers make those artificially inflated. Grover? Do you want to take questions? I, Ryan asked to do your whole presentation. I may have trouble hanging on to my questions if I go all the way to the end. So would you like them now on this section? Because I think this is the end of this section. Sure. Okay, good. When I look at the uh, numbers, uh, the 2.2 million, the 6.8 million, and the 8.8 .8 million, those all add up to being, we have $17.9 million. And I'm Again, this is nobody's fault, so don't hear that, but there's a sensitivity after being um, chastised uh, about uh, being irresponsible with money. Um, there's seven, almost $18 million of money sitting in reserves and there is no conversation. And our job, back to what our job is, is to provide input on recommendations for how monies and assets and stuff and if we're not party to that, this just seeing at the last minute, yep, that looks good to me. Well, that sounds good. That's not what I envision our role to be. And having been on other boards in Clackamas County, I know that it used to be the way where you just, oh yeah, it looks good. And now we actually get clearer expectation because we are representatives of the taxpayers. And that's the, or in this case, rate payers, but nonetheless, they're paying property taxes. It's it's important to understand what we're doing with $18 million and what's the plan for it. And why are we so challenged as we were back just a few months ago saying, it doesn't look like we're solvent. And I know it sounds like that's not the case now because we've got $18 million sitting in reserves. Can I answer before Ryan or Ryan, do you have something corollary to that? Sure. Okay. Um, so again, my job is to look at the overall budget, put together a proposed budget, which I've done. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason that you are, not, we didn't just all of a sudden materialize $17 million in extra funds. It's right. been there. It's been there for years. It's built up over time. Here's why. Back in 2014-15, there was an attempt to get a master plan that was going to have a bond that was going to go forward. And that money, however much was in there at that time, was mm -hmm. going to be used for those capital projects. When that failed, for whatever reason, a, another bond attempt, another district separation uh, vote was not planned. Uh, and so that money has been built up. Why? Because in my opinion, the, the big chunk of that money, uh, and it's 17 million, but you have to understand 10 million of it is uh, more, it is kind of not unreserved, but it's from general fund and capital fund. About 7 million of it is SDC fund. So it's not eligible for us to just decide we're gonna spend it somewhere else. It's just access to the SDCs. But in general, uh, the reason that the, the funds have built up as best as I can put together in the last eight months is because until and unless we've got a master plan or now a systems plan that is community-based, community-driven, community-input-driven, that then this body can make a recommendation and ultimately the board can, uh, can approve that will then drive how we spend this money. That's, that's the plan that I built is that's, so when you see there's a big chunk in reserves, that reserve money is not able to be touched even for next year. What I have done is I've taken four or $5 million of, of some of this capital reserve uh, and recommended, and, and I, I feel comfortable telling you all this because this was uh, what the administrator and I talked about this morning, and putting money towards current capital projects. So to support what we've currently got, um, I'm requesting as, as part of the budget that Gary has approved at this point of $5 million additional to be put to current capital project efforts, specifically to the Concord project into Milwaukee Bay Park. Um, 
beyond that, the rest of the money is labeled for future capital expenditures with the hope that in the next 18 to 24 months, we're going to have a capital project outlay plan based on community input, as we've discussed. And we will, instead of, instead of starting at $0 to build things right away and having to then go out for a bond, we should have a chunk of money in reserve waiting for it to be decided on how that should be spent. So that's where I've put the bulk of that, uh, I, I hate calling it leftover money, but, but it, it's essentially, you know, the reserves from the various areas, moving them out of general fund, moving them and, and identifying them as for future capital expenditures. So that was the justification or, or thought process behind uh, doing that. It, it gives us a clearer idea of, yes, what cash we essentially have. Um, at no point in any, of the, in any of the recordings that I have been part of in any of the meetings, have I said that, that we were in financial ruin, other than the very first one when I just didn't know what the budget looked like at that point, when I said it looked like we were, we were barely scraping by this last year. But ever since, my message has been strong. We've got a good, strong operating budget. We've got a good reserve budget and a good SDC fund. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that that 17 million should be spent in, in a single year or towards a single project. It should be reserved for its purpose that it was intended for. I'm just showing it a little differently so that it's clearer and more transparent to the general person looking at the budget and thinking that we're gonna spend $22 million in, SD, or in capital project funds this year. There's no way we could do that even under best case scenario. So we've made that a clearer definition. Sorry, did, did that did that answer your your points, Grover? Uh, I I think I covered the main. Uh, you did about, and thank you for the new news that is fresh off the press from this morning. That um, some of that money is going to be applied to current uh, uh, significant projects and sort of buried in here. And I mentioned it a few minutes ago. So the whole idea about where. So I'm looking forward to, I, 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 every time Ryan cheers for it, I cheer along with him. I'm not trying to hone in on your special enthusiasm, but when we have a plan, I, I think we're gonna be in a whole lot better shape because we don't really have criteria that specifically chooses how we're gonna use money because we haven't set those priorities. And so we're, we're through no fault of anyone on the screen, period. I mean, we inherited this and now we get to work forward with it. But until we do, it's, it's difficult to look at things like significant personnel costs increase. Now, I'm not questioning it, but what are we doing different that we didn't do before that jumps it up that much? That's the kind of stuff that, and, and is that where spending money is the most important or is it buying property or improving this or that. I don't know because we haven't got to look at that whole picture. And that's what I appreciate. I'm looking forward to be able to know more. And I don't expect to have the fire hose give it all to us in one minute and we're done. So thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. My concern about still not understanding all the parts still exists. Ryan, your hands up. You want to talk? Yeah, thanks. Um, so just a, a, a few quick things just to support where we're going with this. So we Michael, you can move forward. Um, one, um, next year, I have a feeling that this, this is gonna look much different. It's gonna be much yeah. better. Um, I've, I've been doing this for 26 years. I, I mean, I, I look like a young pup, but I'm not. Um, I've been doing this for 26 years and had to do some major overhauls on budgets like this before, which were messy. And um, so this year is gonna be really tough. Next year, it's gonna be a lot smoother. Um, I appreciate the, the good planning that the district's doing, the fact that we're putting money right now because prices are increasing exorbitantly and the fact that we're only going up 0.8% um, uh, in the FTE or, or whatever, that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, uh, I appreciate, sorry, I have COVID brain. I just got over two weeks of it. So I'm a little slow, you guys, I apologize. Um, <laughs> I, I like that we're spending money out of our SDC and our capital fund and continuing to invest. But also, I, I just want to be really clear. I keep hearing um, this message being said that we're going to recommend projects. We need to make sure that we're recommending projects based on community out input from a system plan. 
Yep. Projects that we prefer personally, but this is about making sure that we're all representing our, our combined communities. And I just want to make sure that's on record and abundantly clear to everybody. Um, if we started doing our own projects, that's not what we're uh, here for. So um, thank you, Michael. Keep moving forward with, yep. I, I know next year is going to be much cleaner. It's just, we're going to go through growing pains right now. Yeah. And, and Grover, to your question earlier, I hadn't covered that part of it. The, the budget uh, look that I keep teasing you all with, that's going to be produced when we print our budget book. Once it's gone through the, the approval process, what's printed is going to be far different than anything that you've seen before. That's the new format that, that I keep talking about. Some of these pages are going to look very similar that we're about to look at because they're part of that uh, narrative, but it's not the full budget presentation because, again, we're still in that approval process. Next slide, please. I believe we start getting into, yeah, our, our by fund uh, organization. So administration being the first one, um, you're going to see uh, contingencies changing and, and that change is going to change even slightly again, just because of the action from this morning, we've got to go in and make some adjustments. But generally the, 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 the uh, expenditure or the, the over, overall administration division is, is staying generally flat. Uh, when you take into account all the rest of the budget. It looks bigger here because of uh, that $8,948,406 or 2,206% increase uh, <laughs> from previous years. And that is transferring money. That's part of that fund balance, transferring that out of uh, our budget into cap or out of the, uh, the general fund into capital projects. Next slide, unless I see any hands popping up. Well, I had a quick question on that one topic. It, could we in the future have an asterisk on that 8.9 million down below that says that was transferred? So it gives them some, uh, some understanding because I just look at it and I go, well, okay. But a little asterisk in the thing below that says that's being transferred, that'd be great. We can, we can, we can work on adding some detail in there. Thank you. All right. Programs and community centers. Again, uh, I won't spend a lot of time on here unless anybody has any specific uh, questions. I, I went over the overall summary. This is now just breaking it out by function. Um, you know, increases in some areas, decreases in, in others, but generally an overall 2.3% budget increase for programs and community centers. Next slide. Oh, I have Robert. a question on that. Okay. So when I look at that, and again, I'm not questioning what's being done, but I don't understand. If I look at what we were in 20, I'm pretty much discounting 2020, 2021, because it was COVID affected and hard to figure out anything. But if I take where we were in 1920, and now where we are proposing for 22, 23, that's a 48% increase in personnel services. And I'm just curious, what are we adding that we didn't have before? And how does that fit into whatever criteria for how we're spending our money that we're using short of a systems uh, plan? I, I really, I, honestly, I chair, I cannot speak about budgets beyond this one right now and next year's budget. Uh, what I do know is last year's budget adopted or this current year's budget adopted was 3.243 million. And right. we're requesting a 4.3% increase. I'm not sure where the, uh, those, and, and keep in mind uh, also chair, those are actuals. So our, our adopted number is always different than the actuals. Why? I understand that part. We, yeah, we have staff vacancies, not, et cetera. Totally so, understand. So, so I'm going to guess that, you know, is the 3.383, that's with the assumption that we have full staffing 100% uh, with all the expenses. And it's not going to be that high. Uh, we're proposing just based on uh, per, you know, increases to cost of living and, and merit increases, et cetera. Uh, all of that is absorbed within that 4.3% change. Thank you. And can I just add that like in 1920, six months was, or five months, well, not five months, okay, four months was like people were, we were shut down. 2021, we were shut down. So, I mean, it, it kind of tells a story, makes a little, a lot of sense, especially since we try to be um, all of our agencies try to be uh, conservative the first six to eight months. And then 
uh, when that, our programs start in summer, we tend to beef up a lot. So. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it, it's a constant struggle to try and nail a number. It's like nailing jello to the wall, I think is, you know, the best uh, estimate. Um, yeah. So, but that's generally, you're, you're correct. The reason is the actuals versus what was budgeted and what we were able to fill and when and when expenses came in, et cetera, et cetera. And I really appreciate that comment, uh, Ryan, as well, that in fact, the latter half of 1920 was COVID and then all of 2021 was mm -hmm. COVID. So, and that was right into that summary you guys were both talking about. So thank you for that, that helps me. All right, next slide, please. Um, our older adult services, again, you're, you're seeing similar numbers, uh, increases uh, here due to uh, materials and services, you see a 10% increase. Um, I'm pretty sure that's related uh, to our Meals on Wheels and, and costs for uh, goods and services. Again, a 7.8% increase uh, to the personnel, but a general 72 overall just for this budget, for total budget. Any questions on this one? And you'll, as a good example, I think you're right on Ryan and, and Grover. Uh, this was the division probably during COVID least affected because we kept all of our Meals on Wheels services uh, going. And so you don't see a, a precipitous drop uh, in those so I, uh, in those previous two actuals. So I'm, I'm sure you're probably right on on that. All right, next. Our parks, trails, and natural areas. Uh, again, you'll you'll see uh, very similar trending uh, overall 7.4% increase to our parks, trails, and natural areas budgets. Um, mostly uh, in uh, allocated costs have gone up uh, slightly, but it's 13%. But we, but it's really a difference of $70,000 to $80,000. So it's not a huge jump. Um, the rest of them are are really what I would consider more uh, the same inflationary things that we've been talking about. Any questions? All right, next slide. Planning and development. This is one where you're gonna see a bigger jump because this was where a lot of the money that we were transferring out of other areas was coming into. Uh, and so you'll see, uh, um, uh, Grover, your numbers are slightly different than, than what, you had, what we have calculated here, but generally, yes, you see down at the bottom, the reserves is 15.6949 uh, for that. Um, but that doesn't, uh, Elizabeth, make sure that I'm saying this correct. That reserve does include the SDCs and the general fund reserves. That reserves uh, includes the capital projects, the capital repair and replacement, and the SDC reserves. Okay. There are no reserves budget, budgeted in general fund this year. Right. Um, capital outlay, again, it's, it's the $13.1 million, and that's based on what we think we're going to be able to if all projects moved forward as we've listed out. And I think that's a slide coming up of which capital projects are on our focus for this upcoming year. Um, but uh, generally this is also the, the most understaffed uh, division. And so um, we're really trying to, to get this staffed up. We've got a, uh, a, a fairly higher level uh, planning position and a project manager position that are both uh, authorized and, and just vacant right now. <clears throat> this is that's the linchpin for us moving forward with a lot of the uh, other planning efforts. We're just we're understaffed in in this uh, division, so we hope that that's going to be one of the significant changes to be able to move a lot of these things more forward. I don't see any hands up, so next slide. So these are the uh, six existing capital improvement projects that were being pulled forward from uh, last year's budget, the ones that had been approved from last year. Uh, the systems plan, uh, it, previously the master plan, we've got, a, we had money in last year's budget. We've increased that by an additional $100,000 to I believe $500,000 uh, to, uh, again, if we need to, we may just try and contract the whole kit and caboodle out and just see what we can what we can do but we wanted to add some more money the other part of that too is that's rolled in with our trails plan as well so the systems plan and trails plan uh we're looking at as the same lift uh, or done concurrently or around the same time 
Um, SDC methodology, as you all are aware, that's underway. We'll have a, a brief update here in just a moment. Uh, Milwaukee Bay Park and Concord, obviously, are, are two bigger capital projects that, that have motion on them now. Uh, Jennings Lodge Elementary School improvements, we're uh, starting to uh, talk about that. I'm starting to understand the, the project and, and what has been talked about in the past. And so hopefully, again, some, some forward motion. And district ball fields, as you all are probably aware, and if not, uh, with the loss of the Hoodview fields, uh, we are now in a field deficit. We're, we're not able to offer uh, the level and types of, of ball field programs that we have in the past. Um, and so my understanding had been from the DAB in the past and past administration to try and engage in a study to identify any potential land uh, within the district system to put another ball field complex as a potential future capital project. So there's not a lot of money set aside in there. It's more, it's for the planning uh, side of it. But again, these are ones that are being pulled forward that I didn't want to not keep moving forward. So we included those. Um, before I move to the new projects, does anybody have any questions about these? All right, next slide then. So as we talked about in last month uh, in our meeting, I also had recommended that we add the Justice property in New Urban High School into the capital projects plan for this year. Um, only in the planning stage at this point, so not a lot of money. I think $250,000 between the two of them, but enough for us to start engaging with the community, start engaging with our stakeholders in those areas uh, and start developing a plan that we can then have some forward motion uh, in, in upcoming years and probably be, again, incorporated into uh, whatever systems plan is, is developed. Dave, you, you had a question. Uh, yeah, I wondered, well, how, how much money is allocated to these things here? I, I know that's, that's probably a detail you're not, you can't go into right now, but I know normally these things are a multi-year project, so, so you'd allocate a certain amount each year. And- Yeah, um, yeah and when, we're not just, at it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we're not at a capital outlay project, but generally uh, in our budget and, and in, a, in the budget book, you'll see it laid out uh, even more uh, explanatory, but we have our, our, our uh, kind of planning, our, our uh, or, or in, it, we have three stages. Con construction is, is the, the top one. What we're recommending in these, and again, I can't remember how it was split out. It was about $250,000 between the two of them. It was just to do the initial engagement before we even really get to putting a, a conceptual plan together, unless something gels together really quickly. But there's a lot of steps just to kind of get to that point. Um, and so, yeah, this this is just the initial stages for these two. Um, other projects that were already on the list are in, in obviously different development stages. Grover, did you? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I, just a quick question. So I appreciate, uh, if I understand correctly, the, the budget that we've talked about and I'm looking forward to, and thank you for that, is going to be a different kind of book than we've had before, which will have more detail, which is what we talked about back in December. Um, and I'm thrilled to look forward to that. The reality is uh, we won't get to see that until it's already passed us. And I'm concerned about our ability to make recommendations as per our bylaws for the, uh, so the timing is, is, is a concern of mine because it clearly says that we're supposed to make policy level recommendations and et cetera, et cetera, having to do with all that. And we won't see it until then as, it won't be out until like the first time they see it in the in the presentation with the with the the budget committee and all that. That's the first time it'll be seen. Or yes, that that it's difficult over here to hold up our end of responsibility. I, no faulting anybody. And then the other thing is, I noticed here one of these capital improvement projects. Most of them have some sort of books or agreements, and having again, a sensitive feeling about what happened at Concord, having spent three and a half years on the Concord task force, um, there is a clearly delineated funding agreement with Milwaukee Bay Park, and yet there's nothing even vaguely similar to that for the Concord project. And I'd like to know what we can do to at least, I mean, first of all, 
we're bigger than they are in pure numbers um, of the population. So it's not like we're nobodies and it's a bigger project. So I'm curious where that's gonna fit in. Will we be able to see some sort of funding agreement much like we've been seeing about Milwaukee Bay Park all along? Um, I, I, I'll, I'm a bit confused on the question and, and I'm not really sure what this is doing with the, or is related to the budget. Uh, specifically, uh, yes, there's there's agreements that were are being talked about between the county and NCPRD regarding the the Concord property because we own the land uh, and a county building is going to be built on it. Uh, so we've got to have IGAs of some sort. We're starting that initial talk, but right. but I'm not seeing where the tie into the budget is. Okay, it, it it isn't so much to the budget, but it's on the capital improvement project page is what brings it up. Milwaukee Bay has an IGA with the entity that is Milwaukee. And then there is this larger group of people, which is the Oak Lodge population that has a stake in this. And yet there's no funding agreement. It's still a mystery. And we still don't know how that's playing out and what there is as opposed to the distributions, et cetera. So it isn't an intergovernmental agreement, but it is still the equivalent in a funding agreement. And I see Ryan's hand up. Do you want to address that or something else, Ryan? Yeah, no, I, Milwaukee is part of our district. Yes. Milwaukee is NCPRD. So we, we keep saying the district and Milwaukee. Milwaukee right. is part of our district. Can we all right. get that really, really clear? Because yes. the rhetoric is getting a little. No, I don't think so. The deal yeah, is no, it, Milwaukee it is getting, has an intergovernmental so, agreement. So, but also Milwaukee owns the park property, correct? Yes, who owns NCPRD's property? We, NCPRD the, the district owns NCPRD property. So we can't- Correct, and the, the residents- with ourselves. Have given NCPRD sense. the right to manage it, correct, but it belongs to the residents. But we wouldn't if, create an agreement between the residents and NCPRD for the development of NCPRD property. The agreement would be between us and the county for the library's ability to operate a, and, and build a building on NCPRD property. So I'm still not seeing where we would tie this into the capital project and, and budget amounts. I just meant the dollar amount is well spelled out on all these things. And I don't know what the dollar amount is on the Concord project because it went out the window about last August and there's been no new reality as to what what it is and that's that, that's not true we've provided project updates to the task force and and everybody along the way of what we've got right now i have a meeting next week with the specific project team to talk about breakout prices for concord itself the building but we've been talking about what budgets are in there since we started this that nine point or seven point seven million dollars is still in part of the project budget we, the, the board has not made a decision yet on which direction we're moving for the project. And so until that happens, we can't make any further uh, improvement plans or, or anything until we know what we're going to be improving in and under what circumstance. So again, I'm still trying to figure out how this ties in with my budget presentation. Okay, good. I, it was only the capital improvement projects part of it. That's where it was. And I see Ben has his hand up. Welcome, Ben. Oh yeah, thanks, Grover. Um, I appreciate the presentation and a lot of the questions. I just want to make note that we've got four other pieces of important topics on our agenda plus public comment. So I think, A, in the future, we would, should probably establish time limits on things in the agenda so then we can, you know, give respect to everything that's on the agenda. And we help, that may help, I kind of feel like we're going down a whole lot of rabbit holes that don't really get us to an end. So uh, that, that's all I got to say now. Thank you. Good. And I'd like to actually, I don't know when you came into the meeting, but we already had the potential. Been here the whole time. Okay, I didn't see you. That's all my bad. But the whole idea about having a subcommittee have a breakout, not use the time here and no, let's do it now. I actually wanted to take it out of here. So I'm in agreement with you that it shouldn't have been in this thing, but that doesn't mean the questions don't get to be asked and answered. If that's what that, and that was a choice that I didn't make. I, I wanted to make it a separate meeting. That's all.
that's it for me. You want to next, next go? slide then? Got Capital my... repair and replacement budget. So as I spoke about last uh, last month uh, in the previous year's budget, I believe we had two or three, maybe four capital repair and replace projects identified. Um, as you can see, I've asked staff to greatly boost that up. Uh, as these are, as I've described them, the most public projects, the ones that people see, the things like Alma Myra Park getting a uh, bark chip trail and uh, it, decreasing impacts to its pollinator beds, to planting mulch or mulch planting beds, uh, developing areas, to just filling uh, the, the playground areas with the engineered rubber fiber uh, or engineered mulch fiber. Um, and, and you see all the, the smaller details on there of zero turn mowers and uh, tree plantings and, and all of that. But these are the ones that uh, have the most visible impact. No, I, I, I see people's eyes glaze over when I talk about roof replacements and concrete pad replacements, but people get excited about uh, trolley trail maintenance and pollinator beds and, and you know, trail rehab. And so these are the these are the things that are in the plan to do in this upcoming year, not just a laundry list of things. We hope to accomplish each of these uh, in some meaningful way. Just Bro a quick question. The last item says gas powered maintenance tools with electrical battery operated, but there's also the mower. Is the mower going to be electric also? No, unfortunately, the the technology for uh, okay. large mowers is not there yet for battery Thanks. operated. Joel, you had a question. Yeah, uh, just to jump in real quick, uh, the uh, the going through this list, I know, I know there's a lot on this list, but uh, I, I am curious because this leads to just I guess general thoughts on the property of North Clackamas Park, the seal coating out there in the driveway. Typically, when you're doing something like that, would that include all the parking spaces around the community center as well, or is those those are separate entities in and of itself? Yeah, th uh, this one specifically is uh, to seal coat the driveway to our maintenance shed. Oh, so it's gotcha. not recoating okay. the whole thing. Uh, I, I see on here, we didn't put driveway to maintenance shed. Uh, so it's just the small area in front of our maintenance shed that we're going to seal coat. It's it's getting pretty rotten. As much. Oh, okay. I got excited. I thought everything was going to be nice and shiny out there. But I, nope. so I, I, in, in but courts, future, we're hoping I guess, to, to get a whole bunch of courts uh, resurfaced and restriped. So. No, that's terrific. I, I guess it, just in curiosity <coughs> with that, though, would, would those, are those separate parking lots or is that all considered one? I mean, it's a large space and that's why I ask about it. I, maybe you don't know that, but it was just something that popped into my head. So don't worry about it. Yeah, no, I don't know, but I'll know it the next time we talk, Joel. Uh, any other questions on capital repair and replace? I believe we're right to the to the very end. So next slide. The questions, uh, and I, <laughs> if there's any other questions. All right, well, that concludes our presentation on the proposed budget for 22-23. So next item is the Milwaukee Bay Park standing update or standing meeting as asterisk standing meeting item. And we have Heather Cook here uh, to give us an update. All right, can you guys see my screen up there? Um, and it looks like Milwaukee Bay Park and the Willamette River, yeah, okay. Um, let me get a better view here, full screen. If someone could just interrupt if it doesn't advance or anything, I had some computer problems earlier, so I think I've smoothed it all out, but please, please interrupt brutally if needed. Um, so tonight, I really wanted to give you an update on Milwaukee Bay Park because of our latest round of design work. Um, and so um, we are getting we are really spending a lot of time this month taking the latest um, level of design work and bringing it to uh, not just the project team and related staff at the um, at the city and um, NCPRD and, and some of our agency partners, but we're also bringing it to the community and that definitely includes the DAC. So we wanted to give you an update. Um, I will give a little bit of a spoiler and just also mention that You'll, you can see a presentation um, much like this and information much like this um, 
by both going online between now and April 17th. And there's a webinar on the 18th where um, I'll be giving a somewhat similar presentation um, and having a chance to address questions that we've received and also do some live Q&A. So that's my shameless plug. Um, but I'll bring you pretty quickly through here. I know we're short on time, so I want to use this time wisely. Um, so tonight I want to just talk a little bit about what the design refinement actually is and go through some next steps. And just confirming, are you seeing my slides advance? Yep. Yes, okay. So what, what does design refinement mean? That could mean a lot of things, right? So basically what we're doing is we're developing more design detail, but we're also aligning the design with the, um, and the cost of the project with the funding available. So um, we are looking at creating efficiencies in the design. Um, we're looking at identifying different places where we can save on costs. What we're also doing, which is challenging, um, I will admit, is we're also trying to really preserve the design intent. So when we said we were gonna deliver a park and a program, we're still trying to deliver that park and that program. And, um, and so we're really working hard to make that happen. Um, we're also assuming the current funding plan. So we've talked a lot about funding in the past. I'm, I'm not talking about funding tonight, but it's 9.6 million for all the construction costs and indirect costs. That funding package hasn't changed. So even though construction costs have risen, the funding package is the same. So this work we're doing right now is to sort of like find a way to close that gap and do it really mindfully and creatively. Um, and we have a really great team that's been, you know, putting very intelligent heads together on this. So I'm very excited about where we are. Um, and just as a little bit of a retrace of our steps, the last time we showed a design to the community um, was the schematic design in 2019. And right now we've dialed in uh, with a little bit more design detail, but this is just a very high level diagram to show you that a, a lot of the basic program really remains the same. So. We've still got the amphitheater lawn, we've got the play area, we have a water feature, we have a restroom. Those are just some major kind of, you know, blobs we have on there, but we, um, you'll see uh, the rest of it looks very familiar. We've got pathways, we've got a picnic terrace, we've got um, picnic areas, we've got a plaza, we have a trolley trail. So um, we're really doing a great job so far keeping that program. And we're, this is part of an iterative process where we're gonna continue to do this cost it, refine it, cost it, refine it. So right now we're really looking at maintaining that program and we're gonna see um, if we can continue to do that. So the, again, this is online. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time tonight going through all of these details, but I mentioned a few of these things. We, we still have this lovely picnic terrace. We've got a stage in the amphitheater. Um, but again, one of the things that really jumps out at you with this design is we have this lovely way of bringing people into the site in this meandering fashion that really is meant to mimic the, the flow of the river. Um, and it really brings access to the site in a way that just hasn't happened before. You know, for your average energetic five-year-old, they can go all over the site in about five minutes, but a lot of people need to have other ways to support that access level surfaces, reasonable slopes, you know, ADA access. So these pathways are important and they really tie together all these different features on the site. Um, and in that regard, um, I love this diagram because this is really just showing, you know, we have these pathways and they're creating ADA access throughout the site. And right now there, there is only one spot um, and it's a, it's a true grading puzzle to make this all work. But um, our, our uh, designers have done a great job. There's only one spot where we have a stairway and it's, there's, you know, ramps, um, switchbacks essentially that work around that. So we're very pleased with the ability of, um, our crew to be able to continue to work out a design that provides so much access to people of all ages and abilities. Whoops. So um, what wasn't in your packet were some um, uh, illustrations, some perspective drawings that the team was finishing when we sent out the packet. So these are now inserted into the um, presentation and uh, they are online already, so if you go to www.milwaukeebaypark.org, you will see these diagrams and have a little bit more time to kind of look at them and, and noodle over them, um, and if you'd like, come back to the presentation on April 18th. So I'm going to show you a couple of different views. One is the amphitheater. It's a perspective that's roughly kind of from here near the um, uphill slope of the, the existing redwood tree out toward the water in the amphitheater. Um, I'll show you another one that's the playground looking uphill. Takes a minute for our eyes to adjust to that perspective. 
And then another one looking south um, from um, the sort of more northern end of the site toward the water feature. So the first one is this view uh, sort of over the picnic terrace and toward the amphitheater, um, just giving an idea of how we're creating this flexible space that can have a few people sitting around enjoying a nice day, as well as a very large group of people. Um, and so we're looking forward to having this as a flexible gathering space for um, small groups, larger group groups, events, performances, et cetera. Um, there's also a fire pit that would be like a special event sort of thing, and we're still kind of fine tuning the design on that. It, it, uh, it's not meant to be just a um, lump of concrete. So some of this stuff is representative at this point and, and is an exact detail. But you get a sense of the, um, the pattern and the intention, the views and sort of how things relate to each other. And again, you can see you already have, you know, several paths weaving throughout the site. This would be the edge of the picnic terrace just to orient you to the um, previous drawings. So we were here, uh, excuse me, we were here looking out. Um, now we're gonna look a little bit at the play area. And the play area is this great opportunity and challenge because there's a lot of topography and slope on this site. And we're trying to keep as much as we can out of the um, uh, inundation zone and floodplain. So what we try to do is really work with the topography of the site, but still make it nature play and still make it accessible. So we've done some representation of what these things could be, having a large uh, nature play structure, you know, more wood nature play type of element, um, featuring an element that's more based on sort of a cooperative and accessible play structure. Um, this particular one's called a we saw, kind of clever, but um, it would could be something like that or similar. We've got a lot of grade to deal with here. If you can see where my cursor is, so we're looking at introducing some slides. Uh, the one that's currently um, specified in the plan is actually a covered slide, but we don't have a picture of that and it's not quite this long. Uh, another one here would be shorter. Um, we also have some boulders that are represented here that would be for scrambling. So people who can scramble and climb over rocks can enjoy that. Um, and then we're kind of exploring some of the more whimsical elements. Nothing is set in stone, but you know, maybe there's a willow tunnel with live willow stakes. Maybe there are some you know, interactive musical instruments. So we're, we're putting some things out there to see um, what sticks and what fits uh, and what we can afford, but we're working to deliver a great play area. And this is um, looking back up toward that Monroe Street Plaza. This is the restroom. It's, you can see it's sort of in the shade of the redwood tree that's off to the right. And this is a representation of what that play area could look like. Um, again, not a, not a yard for yard representation, but an idea of what we'd be looking at working with slope and incorporating different um, features and threading it all into this network of pathways. Uh, moving just um, north a little bit, we have the water feature that didn't have a lot of design detail in our last round. So the teams really um, dialed that in and, and looked at exploring some different options from um, sort of what you see here with a, a basalt type seating, very natural to fit with the aesthetic of a natural riverside environment, looking at some kind of spray that's pretty simple, um, easy to op easier to operate and maintain. Uh, different types of seating um, and just kind of ways for people to, you know, cool off and, and have fun. So the perspective for that one, uh, again, looks south. So you're a little bit more on the north end of the site at this end, looking toward the restroom. Uh, can't really see the redwood trees so much in this shot, but that's your orientation. So we're looking at how to integrate seating with, um, with some water spray, um, as well as kind of how to group that with some picnic tables for families to gather. Um, we're also thinking about what this looks like when it's dry because it's Oregon and we're not gonna have these splash um, mechanisms running all the time. It, it will be programmed to be off and it will be, there'll be many months where in Oregon this doesn't make sense and we'll just have dry surface with cooler temperatures or you know, that thing called rain or hail or snow, depending on whether you're in April or April. 
Um, so we are thinking about a lot of things still that um, we need to nail down, but you know, everything from the surfacing to the seating to, you know, these more natural options for um, sitting and creating some sense of place. And then finally, the other feature I wanna kind of focus on is, is um, just a, um, this snippet is just for uh, representation, but looking at the trolley trail. So we're really exploring um, our design for the trolley trail. We currently have a um, 14 foot um, uh, multi-use path. Um, the materiality isn't uh, confirmed yet, but the idea is to have sort of a bike zone and a ped zone with some separation for safety. Um, this is an example of an area where you have separation between bikes and peds, both in terms of the stencils and the, and the materiality and the color. So we're looking at all different approaches so people kind of understand where they are in space and also looking at ways to really navigate zones like this, you know, where you have a plaza intersecting with a trail. Uh, it's, it's an exciting opportunity. It's also a design puzzle. We wanna, we wanna really get that right. And um, this is just, a, these are a couple of cross sections. This is the um, sidewalk, a bike, shared use path concept that's shown on the plan. These are our existing conditions. So we have narrower paths where we're currently today um, sharing space and in, in very substandard conditions with narrow pathways. So with that, um, I know today our time is limited, but I did wanna give you a heads up on the near term next steps. So in April, we'll be presenting the refined design in the community. In addition to the um, workshop that I mentioned on the 18th, we have a, um, uh, some small group meetings uh, planned to reach um, members of the community who have not been um, historically engaged to as great of a degree. Um, we're also working on a cost estimate update. So this design refinement that you're seeing um, bits of today, it's really a response, not only to things we've learned since the schematic design, but also knowing that we have a limited funding package. And so we have to think about how to fit that design to the funding package. We're gonna do that all over again. So we're getting a cost estimate on this design and then we'll go through the same exercise. It's very iterative and we'll say, okay, we hit the mark, we're pretty close or wow, we actually have more money to spend, which would be a great scenario or hey, it costs more than we thought let's look at some more ways that we can make this fit. Um, so those are our next big steps um, throughout this month. And then going into May and June, we'll be working on the next design refinement. So our team calls this one 50% design, the next uh, design is 100% design, and then we start going into construction documents um, after that. So um, this is also the time when we start submitting to the city for land use uh, approval. Um, and we continue to work on um, agreements, uh, funding agreements and approvals for the project. Um, we still have um, some funding agreements to work out and um, we're continuing to work on the design as that, as that uh, corollary work is done. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Heather. You're welcome. Okay, next item is, thank you, Heather, the Concord update. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I don't have oh. any other update uh, as far I as- I see some hands up. Uh, oh, sorry. I, actually, my bad. Yes, Mr. Johnson, you're up. Yes, thank you. Um, Heather and Michael, how are you all going to collect input at this stage from the DAC on the design? As my first question. Because uh, I do have some comments about that. And then second, I would really like to hear from the district the cost and schedule potential impacts based on the, uh, the park board decision two weeks ago to not approve the funding until the master IGA is approved between NCPRD and the city of Milwaukee. Um, to be quite frank, I was quite shocked that that happened with the, their first meeting out of the gates and knowing how much momentum this project has 
from the entire district and this even from this committee. Um, so I would like to hear from you all your kind of sense of how you felt about how that went and if this is, is are there schedule and cost impacts because I don't believe that was any of the conversation or raised at all in that meeting two weeks ago with the the park board. And, and I'll speak to what, what I can, which is is really, I mean, I'm not going to render an opinion on, on what was done. The board took action. Um, what I can say is that uh, our uh, county legal team uh, has been uh, put in charge of, of working on the, the master IGA or the, the overall IGA. Um, there is impending uh, timelines uh, to, to get this done. Um, all I can say is we're going to work and do everything we can to, to, to see that as much as we can. It's a very difficult lift uh, for anybody that's gone through one of these uh, master IGA type of processes. Um, but until and unless there's something else that happens, uh, staff on, on NCPRDs and we're, we're moving forward as we need to, to keep things moving along. If, if there's not motion on the master IGA uh, in, in enough time, will it affect the timeline? Absolutely. Uh, to what degree and, and, and cost also? Sure, uh, time is money. Uh, but to what degree at this point? I don't even want to speculate. I'm, I'm an optimist at heart and I'm trying to do as the board has uh, asked us to do. And, and so we're moving forward with that as, as best we can. Okay, uh, Desi, you're up. Yeah, uh, to Ben's second point, I just wanted to comment on how disappointed uh, I am that that decision was made uh, at that meeting. You know, <clears throat> there's been a lot of stall, stall tactics and divisionary tactics throughout this whole process. <clears throat> and I feel like, we're in abusive. We're in an abusive relationship where the you know the the commission says, "Well, renegotiate the IGA." We come back and we renegotiate the IGA. Then and now it's well, okay, you did that. Now we want master IGA done before that. And it's like we we keep talking about how uh, Milwaukee Bay Park is for everyone. It's not just Milwaukee. I feel like maybe if we just called this park North Clackamas Bay Park, that it might be done. I mean, it's, it's so many times in these meetings, it's been Milwaukee versus everyone else. And that's not what it is. It's Milwaukee is part of this district. This park is for everyone in this district. There's no way we're going to put up a big giant fence and say only Milwaukee residents can come in here just even <clears throat> the whole idea of like well we're doing this because Milwaukee might leave the district Milwaukee isn't leaving the district Milwaukee's been in the district for 29 years I don't know why why there's thinking like this you know if I was a teacher when I was a teacher it'd be like in a district when we're adopting new curriculum and you get second grade teachers saying well, we don't want to do this because we heard some fourth grade teachers might leave. It's what's best for kids and families in that school district. Milwaukee Bay Park is what's best for kids and families within the entire district, not just Milwaukee. And I'm really tired of this Milwaukee. Milwaukee gets this. Milwaukee gets that. It's, it's the entire district. It's for everyone. It's not just Milwaukee. And I'm just really disappointed that this keeps coming up over and over again. We are adults here. We need to move on and build this park as soon as possible and stop playing these games. Thank you, Desi. You're up, Ryan. Uh, uh, thank you, Desi. I, I agree with you 100%. Um, there's, there's also, um, we're not thinking the big picture. We're talking about livability of our region. And um, doing a project of this caliber on a very rare property on a river, uh, the Willamette River, is an opportunity that I, it's just interesting that we keep like 
holding off and and there's a lot of this rhetoric about them versus us when we're all us and I understand that Happy Valley left um, and there's some pretty we're pretty bruised from that that's Happy Valley that's not District 2 that's not Milwaukee so I think we we really need to take as a group an approach to to cut out that rhetoric because it's not helpful and I've heard it over and over and over and honestly it, it's just not helpful that conversation this is a regional feature this 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 park is something that because of the quality of design is going to bring eyes and attention to our area, our district. So I, I also agree with um, <clears throat> what you're saying is like, I'm, I'm a little surprised from what I heard, I wasn't able to stay on uh, the whole meeting, but I was a little surprised to hear that there was a, another, they weren't gonna vote on anything, but yet the, the board voted. So um, be really nice to hear the board uh, uh, give us the reasoning behind that. Um, but we need to keep moving forward with this project. We can't keep stalling it because every minute we stall, it costs more and it costs more. Inflation is really high, it's costing more. So let's keep moving. Thank you, Ryan. Anybody else? That completes the Milwaukee Bay Park update. Now the Concord update. Okay, as I was starting to say, I apologize uh, for, for not allowing for the comments uh, on the previous. I don't have much of a Concord update uh, from what, where we were last month, uh, except uh, all of you should have received an email by now. Uh, if you haven't, it's in your inbox from Gary Schmidt, the county administrator. Uh, he is setting up a joint uh, task, uh, uh, Oak Lodge uh, task force combined a DAC meeting for next Wednesday from 5.30 to 6.30 virtually for him to provide some uh, chance for, for community input uh, as well as provide his perspective on the Concord project and where it's at right now. Um, so I wanted to make sure that if you hadn't checked your emails, please do put, if you can make it, uh, please put it on your calendar. It's not going to be uh, run by by staff or anything. It's uh, this is Gary's meeting that he's calling, um, and so other than that, though, um, we don't have much update on on Concord. Other than as I mentioned earlier, uh, I am meeting with Opsis and the design team to start looking at kind of the breakout costs of individual improvements to the facility, such as, for example, our HVAC system or lack thereof and what an HVAC system would cost to, to install in the building. Um, seismic upgrade options when we start looking at roof replacements. The roof needs to be replaced, not uh, from my understanding the underlying timbers, but at the very least the shingling and the flat roof areas need to be uh, pretty much replaced uh, wholesale. So it, um, what I'm wanting is those were all really mixed in with uh, bits and pieces of the original project and it's taken some time. And, and there's a few other specific ones that I've asked Opsis to look at. We're gonna start meeting on that next, uh, next week, like I said, just to get the initial information uh, so that I can get an idea of size of scale. Like I have no idea for a proposed HVAC system for that building for air handling and heat and cooling, what something like that is. I know it's not gonna be $15. Uh, but but I don't know beyond that what, what that'll be. So hopefully I'll get some of that information and, and get that moving. Um, also, there was concern at the board meeting brought up about mold uh, in the building. So uh, we've met with a, a mold inspector that's uh, gone over to the building once. Uh, I believe they're going to be over there next week to perform the actual uh, air sniffer and, uh, and, and location test to see if there's uh, mold. They go all the way up, up into the rafters and uh, down into the boiler rooms and everything, and they check everything. So we'll, we'll have a definitive answer uh, on that, hopefully by the end of next week. Um, but other than that, I just really wanted to, to bring your attention to the uh, meeting invitation from uh, the county commission or county administrator uh, for next week. Um, and it looked like Joel had his hand up. Yep. Just a quick question, uh, Michael, I assume uh, Gary's meeting uh, on the 20th, uh, for those of us that aren't going to be able to make that up, like, for example, I know I have a previous conflict, but that'll be available in a recording at some point after. That's my understanding. Yeah, it'll be recorded and posted. Very good. Any else on Concord update? Not at this time. Thank you. 
SDC methodology methodology update. Good tongue twister. And again, I'll yeah, turn well. this over to Heather. Yeah, this one's quick because we're uh, still working with the consultant. So um, we will be, I'm trying to confirm the timeline for, um, I think there's some information that we'll need to tweak um, from what we're submitting. And then uh, I need to just figure out their turnaround time for um, getting us a draft methodology to review. Um, so I will keep you posted. I don't have a lot more to report right now, but we're, we're working to move that forward. Thank you. Any questions about the SDCC methodology update? Okay. Next is the NCP, NCPRD funding update. And, and I don't have any other information other than the budget stuff that we had covered above. Okay. Any questions about that? Next item, public comment. Um, let's see. It looks like there is one hand up. Uh, Jeanette DeCastro has uh, got her hand raised for comment. Very good. Yes, please, Jeanette. You're up. I'm sorry. I can't turn my camera on. Uh, I Going back to the budget presentation, and I'm sorry if that was covered, um, what's our proportion of full-time employees versus part-time or temporary say teaching a class um, that's changed uh, from last year's budget to this year's budget. Uh, and, and of course you've asked that after Elizabeth uh, Gomez has left the meeting. Um, so I'm gonna cover what I can. Uh, the total FTE count uh, is going up by three and I believe that brings us to 39 FTEs. Um, our uh, part-time count I wanna say it's around 33 or 34, and that's going down by four uh, because part of uh, two of the three FTE positions that we're adding are because we have part-time positions that we've been had difficulty filling. So we're trying to turn those into full-time positions. Uh, one of them is a building maintenance assistant. Another is a pool supervisor at the aquatic center. Um, so that that's the best I can recall. Uh, we didn't have that as part of the slide. I know it's part of some of our budget documents and those are fairly rough, but pretty accurate numbers. Great, thank you. I'll hold my next questions for the next one. Thank you. Anyone else in the public comment queue? Uh, I am not seeing any other hands up, Chair. Very good. So this completes our public comment. Thank you, um, Jeanette, for being there. and. All of who else are out in the dark there. Um, so our next item is DAC member reports. Who'd like to go first? And there's Anita's hand up. Here I am again. Um, yes, yeah, so I wrote, I wrote to all of you and I know some of you got it twice because I sent it two different ways because it wasn't working for everybody when I sent it to via DAC at um, ncprd.com. Um, but my wish is that um, every, every month at these meetings, we would get a report from each sub area, just a little update about what's, what's, what's cooking in, in the different sub areas. And in my sub area, sub area two, the, one of the main things on the burner is that on July 16th, uh, the community is putting on the annual trolley trail fest. And that is located where the trolley trail crosses Oak Grove Boulevard um, and it's grown to about a hundred food crafts and community information booths. It has live music from 11 until four, including the band I'm in, and has been attended by about 2000 people in the past. And I heard back from Melina, NCPRD's communications manager, that as in years past, NCPRD is excited to have a booth at the fest. And hey. uh, in the in other years, NCPRD has provided, uh, has helped with some of the printing and has provided kids activities at their booth. And this year, Opsis Architects has expressed interest in being there too. And they're the architects for the Concord project, but they also recently designed New Urban High School, which is adjacent to the, where the Trolley Trail Fest is happening. And this high school has the field that's being considered for an NCPRD park. And Ben Johnson's landscape firm has designed the landscaping at the school. So there are a lot of nice connections in the mix. 
Also, the, new di the director of the New Century Players has been touching base with Mike Bork about becoming something like the resident theater company for NCPRD. So I think that's pretty exciting. And that's basically the news from sub area two. And if anybody else would like to tell me what's going on in the other sub areas, that would be great. Thank you, Anita. Joel, you're up. Uh, thank you. I, you know, I uh, wanted to, I, I appreciate what Anita uh, sent to us and just, um, I guess, reported as far as encouraging sub area reports. It, it got me thinking how uh, I know I have a luxury of a board uh, at the community center that I report to and get feedback from. Uh, I, you know, obviously, City of Milwaukee has some folks uh, that they are uh, they're in contact with. I don't know everyone else's circle so much, uh, whether it's CPOs, uh, Rotary clubs, Kiwanas, whatever. Maybe it's just your neighbors uh, in a block party. But uh, it it would be kind of nice to maybe get us uh, all kind of have a, a feel of how we are communicating with. The, uh, the constituents we get to kind of hang with on a day-to-day -day basis. So I, I really appreciate that, Anita, uh, and I hope uh, we start taking advantage of that. Um, uh, insofar, in, in that spirit, uh, there's a lot of exciting things happening at our district's uh, only community center currently, the Milwaukee Community Center. Um, uh, at the NCPRD Board of Directors meeting, we did have our bylaws approved, which uh, that was some good news, uh, some great news coming out of that meeting. Uh, it was mostly housekeeping stuff, uh, removing some language about Happy Valley and consolidating our board from 12 to 11 members. Uh, we were a full board uh, for about a month, and then we had a resignation. So we actually do have a vacancy at the, uh, the Clackamas County Advisory Board to the Milwaukee Community Center. Uh, and I would encourage all of you to spread that news with whatever circles you run in. Um, we meet the second Friday of every month, 930 at the Milwaukee Community Center. Uh, you get a muffin and some coffee out of the deal at the very least. Uh, but the meetings are about an hour and a half. And uh, it's a, it, this community center serves our entire district in so many ways. Uh, you'll have a great appreciation for it, even if you just come and sit in on a meeting. Uh, but please uh, help spread the word on that. Two items that are coming up uh, very soon. One, uh, tomorrow, uh, the Housing and Senior Services Fair is happening at the Milwaukee Community Center from 10 to uh, noon. Uh, over 40 vendors will be there. Uh, this is an excellent opportunity to uh, get people that may be uh, considering senior assisted living, uh, other resources about that, uh, all in one spot to make connections uh, as they may need to. So I would encourage you, if you, can, if you can or have time, even tonight, to spread the word on email lists or whatever. Uh, that's a great opportunity. Uh, and then the other event coming up at the end of the month, uh, the annual Italian dinner. Uh, I believe this is the 33rd year. Um, it's uh, April 30th. Uh, this will be a to-go uh, function or uh, to-go event again this year, meaning there won't be congregate dining at the Milwaukee Community Center. But you can buy tickets online. I'll put a link into the chat to everyone before we I sign off uh, here. Uh, but there's also some great raffle prizes, things like that. Uh, all this fundraising goes to benefit the Milwaukee Community Center Nutrition Program, Meals on Wheels Program, and other programming that serves our entire district. So. Please get out there and help spread the word on this. It's only 15 bucks for a great meal. Uh, and you can get some free raffle tickets out of it right now, I think, too, if you uh, sign up and buy those dinners uh, in advance and then you go pick them. Is that it, Joel? Okay, great. Okay, who's next? Well, seeing none, I'll go. So uh, for sub area one, uh, I actually wanted to let you know that um, we are in the process of uh, canvassing our community in the process of finding people who will be participating in our upcoming May and June town hall meetings um, for uh, the sub areas of unincorporated outreach and um, in that vein, in addition to that, um, we have begun a group uh, called the Friends of the Park at Jennings Lodge because there's a, a pent up um, interest in a park park in uh, our neck of the woods. And so um, we are uh, gathering up for that. And then we're also looking forward to 
it's on our proposed items for next month, um, but so some sort of update from the tribe as far as um, input for us to consider, uh, because uh, we had a, a pretty significant um, outpouring of information from people who live in the general area. And so I'd like to take that into uh, consideration and then see where we go to finally finalize the name for the uh, Boardman Wetlands uh, site. And then that's it for my sub area, but I did have, so thank you, uh, Mike, for sending out the uh, copy of the parking lot materials. I had a great opportunity running through that and looking at the parts and so, so forth. And about the only thing is, and I don't need to do it now, but um, I, it, it just leads me to more questions like where's the column on what's next and where's the column that tells us what we could, what the next step will be. And for the completed items, they're not really complete, just a part of it was complete. So, so I'm really looking forward to that and then where we'll be able to see it on an ongoing basis as opposed to a periodic posting. And I don't need the answer now, but that's what I'm interested in. If you want to give an answer now, you can, but. Uh, just that it is live on our, on our oh, it website. Is. Yeah, it's it's live. It is it is there for the whole world to see. Um, okay, and yes, we, we if you have uh, specific suggestions uh, that that you'd like to see or whatever, uh, please uh, send those to Jessica. Ideally, she's uh, if you send them to me, I'm just going to send them to Jessica. So send them to Jessica. Ideally, uh, and uh, and and it is it, this. We designed this hopefully to be a constantly living, evolving uh, thing. So you know, we sure. we also have to be conscious of confidential issues on some projects mm -hmm. if we're talking land and and so there are some things not included but um yeah it is live check it out if you haven't uh, checked out the live version um again it's not very interactive at this point we hope to improve interactivity but being able to put information on the website i, I consider it a big enough lift at this point so um but but right. thanks for thanks for that grover uh, staff worked uh, really hard on on putting that together Thank you. And I will send a few inquiries about certain things that I had a question about. Anita, you're up. Well, just going back to the idea of getting to know different sub areas, um, I just remembered one thing that um, I've experienced and found to be just amazingly good about learning about other places that I didn't know about before. Um, NCPRD, uh, especially Tanya Williamson and the other natural area specialists set up these projects uh, you know, restoration projects at different uh, areas or parks in the district. And so I went to this one that was supposed to be in Grover sub area, uh, the whole property. And it was uh, this amazing revelation. There's this wetlands thing that is so much bigger than just the um, Boardman Wetlands Park is there sort of in its, well, it's in formative stages or restoration stages. And it's one of those things where you volunteer you get plugged into the park or the future park in a different way than you would if you just visit. And it's one of those things where you, you think you're volunteering to help something else, but you get more out of it maybe than you gave. It was a lot of fun. And I've done that also with um, uh, Spring Park and uh, an island. And so I just wanna recommend that you check out what things uh, Tanya and um, the others have set up every once in a while for working in different parks because they happen pretty often. Either planting, pulling out ivy. Anyway, it's, uh, it's an interesting way to get to know uh, different areas in our district. Thank you. Any more DAC member reports? Going once, twice, okay, moving on. District monthly report. Um, for the uh, effort of time and, and looking at the clock, I, I don't really have much to add uh, on here that uh, that couldn't uh, couldn't wait. So unless anybody had any questions about our district monthly report on any specific projects or anything we highlighted, uh, the district is in full uh, getting ready for summer, getting the budget done, getting uh, things moving, trying to hire staff, uh, et cetera, et cetera mode. We're, we're all going at uh not 100 miles an hour maybe uh, 75 at least so um if there's other, any other questions uh, on it i don't know if, if you had a question on the report yeah uh, it's just a detail there's something that you're planning about a hispanic hispanic cultural event is that right 
Yes, uh, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, and it's, I believe, I, I don't want to get the dates wrong. It's probably in the report, and I don't have it pulled up. September yeah. 10th, I okay. believe. Okay. Yeah, September 10th. Uh, there's even a name for it, but I'm not going to try and remember that because I've only that's seen okay. it once. Yeah, uh, but yes. I just wanted a little more something. Yeah, okay, it, cool. it's, it's going to be, we're, we're going to be releasing more information as it develops. What we've done at this point is uh, uh, Melina did a really amazing uh, outreach job uh, about the festival. Uh, we had uh, lots and lots of uh, responses in both English and Spanish language. So we had a Spanish language version out there. I believe we got 93 responses, which is I think six or seven times more than the, than the last uh, uh, time we had done a Spanish language survey. Um, people are very excited. We had a lot of people wanting to volunteer, uh, wanting to get on mailing lists, um, and it's and it's part of our overall effort to be reaching out to Hispanic culture, to any of the BIPOC community, LGBTQ. Uh, this is just the first step, and and I'm really excited by the by the early response, and and being able to tie it directly to a, a festival celebration makes it a lot easier to help get that advocacy centered around. So, uh, more more details to come as we develop them. Fantastic, right. thank you. I had a couple of questions. If somebody else doesn't, <clears throat> it's on the uh, the asset development page. <clears throat> it's where you get down to uh, projects, tasks being worked on. <clears throat> I have a just incredible curiosity. <clears throat> excuse me. As to <clears throat> what kind of timeline exists for these things. So if I look at uh, <clears throat> particularly the planning for metro local sharing fund priorities. I have no idea what's gonna be happening or when it's gonna be happening and what part we play or is being played. That's, that's, that's one and then the next one down, the interim capital improvement plan. Again, what's being planned and what's the timeline on that. And then also the long range system planning. I'd be very curious what our timeline and unfoldment on that is. Just, just so I can be uh, not just waiting for the announcement. Well, it already happened and I hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, none of those things uh, would, would take anybody by surprise. So uh, the system plan, as I've mentioned, really, we need to figure out how either to get our staff person hired on uh, that'll be able to take uh, that lift and, and develop scope and get that, that contract going, or we need to look at contracting it purely. And that's what Heather and I are talking about now. Once we get it started, we estimate it to be a 18 to 24 month process. Uh, that may not be, we'll get results on some pieces of it earlier than that, uh, but but the, from full start to finish, 18 to 24 months. As I mentioned, I think last month, that's where we're looking at a needs assessment and capital improvement plan and outlay as the first uh, steps of it. But right. we're, we're just resource short for, for even getting it out on the street at this point. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, the um, Metro money, again, we're on a timeline for uh, for getting the next step is developing the eligible projects, I think, as Heather covered at last month's meeting. Uh, once we've developed those eligible projects of, of things that could be done based on the eligibility, uh, then there will be uh, we have to do public engagement and uh, we would wind up. Well, I'm saying we have as part of the process for for Metro to approve the money, we can't just tell them, hey, this is what we want to do. There has to be a public engagement process. So as we've talked about, um, I'm not sure, Heather, if you know, is it uh, one meeting or multiple meetings, but uh, there will be public engagement that you all will be invited to. And, and that's not to say that you all as sub area representatives couldn't go out and do you know something within your own sub area to, to look at things. But keep in mind, the biggest filter that we're looking at is what projects are deemed eligible by Metro. Um, and so that's, that's where our starting point is. But we'll be developed as soon as uh, Heather can, she, she always seems to be adding more things onto the list, but she's gotten a few things uh, uh, off that's going to give hopefully some more time for her and I to develop uh, some of these things. But it's just at this point, we're, we're buried without the, the amount of staffing. Uh, that we need. So we're trying to fix that problem at the same time. Okay. I just want to say I'm, I'm anything you know about that by any means, I'd like to know because I do feel we could get community members who would love to participate. So mm -hmm. that's... Yeah. As soon as we set dates, we will, we will let people know or, or start looking at dates. We'll, we'll get you all involved. 
Thank you. Any other questions, comments on the uh, monthly district monthly report? Okay. Future dates. The May agenda submission no later date is April 20th by 5 p.m. The next agenda setting meeting is Monday, April 25th. Chair, uh, just a quick correction. Uh, that had to get switched uh, to Tuesday morning. Uh, you should have gotten a, a meeting invite. We just hadn't had, we had already put out our uh, agenda stuff. So it's Tuesday morning, I believe same time. On, uh, on the, the next agenda? Yes, Is the next agenda setting. Sure, yeah. okay. So it'd, it'd be moved to the 26th that you're saying? Uh, I vaguely mean, remember seeing it was also moved to nine o'clock. You're getting way too, too, too civilized. What, what? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and Jessica, if you want to weigh in, I can't remember what the time was, but yeah, I think the 26th and, and if it's at nine, and I think it was nine o'clock. Yeah. Is that it's correct? 9 okay. Yeah. I apologize. I've got an intertwined board retreat all day on Monday that I've got to be out in, uh, I think it's like in Hillsboro or something that morning. So, uh, yeah. So well, that's uh, great. Tuesday, Tuesday instead of Monday. Great, and I'm glad we're connecting with Intertwine. I, they're a great group. I've been to several meetings with them. Okay, good. And uh, then the next DAC meeting is gonna be Wednesday, May 11th. And the tribe is listed, the tribe input is listed as one of those things. And then um, by then we'll have a little more sense of where we're gonna be on the system plan. Maybe just some, uh, nothing has to be set in stone, but just like it's looking like and looking like would be really helpful for me because that's such a big deal. Okay, and thank you, Ryan, for being the main charge for that. I, you, you enrolled me with your enthusiasm, but besides that, I, I really love that kind of stuff. Yes, Mr. Dave. Yeah, I don't see the um, the upcoming budget meeting on there. You know, we we probably beat that to death earlier, but uh, I assume that there was uh, some kind of budget meeting for the budget group coming up sometime. I thought I heard in May, and uh, I assume it's a public meeting, so. I assume we can go to it if we want to. Yeah, there, there's there's going to be the budget committee hearings, and those are, are public hearings that uh, are open to the public. This is my first time through this, Dave, so I'm not quite sure of all the other steps and, and where things play out. Uh, and that's been part of the difficulty on this is uh, when you all meet as a body versus when we have to be submitting things for budget based on counties, deadlines, and, and all of that. Things just don't align. I, I, my intent is to be uh, do a much better job on coordinating early on on this so that we can get more exposure to you all. Thanks. According to the okay. thing you published as part of today's packet, it says district budget presentation and public hearing on May 23rd. I'm not sure that that may change. That, that's not okay. set by us. So if it does change, whatever happens, we will let you all know. Okay, good. Yes, Ryan. Yeah, yeah uh, just a, a thought. I, I'm, I was thinking about this whole budget presentation and, and one thing I've noticed um, working, especially in Oregon with the budget process is it is messy and it just doesn't line up. So I got to give Michael good luck. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's hard to get all these pieces put together because there's so many layers of, of review. So I do, I, I understand and I, I empathize with the fact that sometimes you guys, it's gonna hit us really hard and we're, we're gonna have very little time to review it. It's just the process in the state is, is a little wonky. So those are all really technical terms too. Yeah, yeah. wonky, yeah, wonky. I, was that like keep Portland weird? Yes. <laughs> okay, any other? Uh... Things for the good of the order. So is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned and the time is, hey, look at that, 729. Thanks everybody.